fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Hello, this is The Lone Ranger. The other day I was watching a cowboy trying to break an outlaw horse. That bronc was plenty mean and the cowboy was having a tough time trying to stick in the saddle. So a couple of the boys around the corral started to serenade the cowboy like this. Have you tried Wheaties? They're whole wheat with all of the bran. Won't you try Wheaties? For wheat is the best food of man. Well, the cowboy tamed the horse, just like man tamed the West with the help of wheat. It was the vast western prairies that attracted the white man, land on which to grow wheat to be made into flour, to give man the energy it takes to live in a frontier country. Today, you can get that same frontier wheat energy, and here's how. Keep on eating your wheat, and you'll be doo 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 and Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow! I'm still there! After a long trip from the east, Colonel Hannibal Wade assumed command of Camp Corbin, an army outpost in Dakota Territory. He inspected the camp and reviewed the cavalry regiment stationed there then summoned all officers to his headquarters tent. His face was dark with anger as he thundered, Major Bennett, this outfit is a disgrace to the Army. Colonel Wade... When the men lined up for inspection, their formation looked like a broken-down picket fence. The truth is, some of the men are on the verge of mutiny. Mutiny? Yes, sir. Any concerted action and we'd be lost. I've tried to keep the main troublemakers apart by assigning them to different companies. Yes. And to keep them from deserting, I've had to disarm and dismount all the men after each drill. As Sergeant McQuaid will tell you. Well, McQuaid? It's like the Major says, sir. I keep the arms and horses under guard. No one will desert without a horse and gun in Indian country like this. That reminds me. General Crook warned me the Chief Spotted Bull and his Sioux tribesmen may jump the reservation at the first opportunity. Now then, Major Bennett. Are you a scout keeping watch on the Indians? The scouts hired by the War Department have quit, sir. Because the food was so poor and they had to wait so long for their pay. Yes. But I have two volunteers secretly scouting for me, sir. They presented a letter from Colonel Miles. They've been of service to him. What's the commotion out there? Your orderly wants to see you, sir. Come in, O'Toole. What is it? It's about your riding breeches, sir. Yeah? The fancy ones. What about them? They're ruined, sir. Yeah. I put them on a tent rope to dry, and gunpowder chewed the seat out of them. Gunpowder? What do you mean? Gunpowder is the name of a mule, sir. Yeah. An old mule that's been retired from service, but one that's kept as the regimental mascot. Sure, a worthless mule ruined my breeches, huh? Don't blame the mule, sir. He doesn't know any better. A mascot? Such nonsense. Small wonder there's no discipline here. You say the mule is retired from service? Yes, sir. I want that infernal mule destroyed. Oh, no, wait, Colonel, Colonel Wade. Well? That mule saved the lives of many soldiers. If it had not been for gunpowder, this regiment would have been massacred. How's that? It happened some time ago when the regiment was on maneuvers. Indians sneaked close during the night and overpowered the sentry. 
The mule was alert and started a commotion that roused the men in time to avert a disaster. Yeah. Had it not been for gunpowder, the Indians would have cut the throat of every man. Hey, any mule would have done the same thing. So would a watchdog. Sir, the men look on gunpowder as a symbol of good luck. They have no patience with sentiment and superstition. Have that mule destroyed. If the mule must die, sir, it will be best not to let the men know about it. They might break into open mutiny. Carry out the orders you see fit. Just make sure the animal dies. Yes, sir. Sergeant McQuaid, you and Master Sergeant Hayes will take the mule out of camp tonight and execute the colonel's orders secretly. That night, the moon was bright when the Lone Ranger and Toto rode across broken country between Camp Corbin and the Indian reservation occupied by Chief Spotted Bull and his Sioux warriors. At the edge of a ravine, they drew rain. This is a good place to rest our horses, Toto. Ah, them plenty tired. We spend long time scouting Indians. Yes, I hope to learn something definite to report to the new commandant at Camp Corbin. You know? No, but I've heard of him. His name is Colonel Wade. Ah, you think him there now? He should be. Major Bennett expected him to arrive today. We tell them Spotted Bull and followers plenty man because them short of food. Major Bennett knows that, Tonto. It's a bad situation. The government promised the Indians food, but because of transportation problems, the promises have been broken. Maybe trouble comes soon. I hope not. If Spotted Bull's warriors get out of hand, the whole Northwest might be in danger. You must stop it. Yes. Look, two men ride into the ravine. Troopers. Uh, and they're leading a mule. Uh, that looked like mule we see in Camp Corbin. The mascot. Uh, Although I think that is the same mule. It's distinctively light in color. And stop. Uh, Me wonder why them bring mule here. I don't know. But I'm going to the floor of the ravine and find out. Uh, me go with Sergeants Hayes and McQuaid stood close to the doomed animal. Hayes, that poor varmint looks like he knows what's coming. Yep. Dad, read it, gunfighter. Why'd you have to chew up the colonel's fancy bridge? If the boys find out we shot the critter, they'll lynch us. Why don't we just turn gunfighter loose? Oh, he'd go right back to camp. And the new colonel would give us a drumhead court-martial for disobeying orders. Well... Here goes. Don't shoot that mule. Huh? Mask man. And an engine. Oh, who's... We're not outlaws. Whoever you are, you're meddling in army business. Sergeant McQuaid, we overheard your conversation. Then you know why I'm acting on orders. So go on about your business. There may be serious consequences if you carry out those orders. Who are you, mister? Why are you interfering with us? Tuttle and I are the men who volunteered to scout for Major Bennett. Yeah? You wearing a mask? Yes. Hey. The Major said you had a letter from Colonel Miles. Reckon you must be all right. Thanks. How do I take gunpowder off your hands? You, why, what do you do with him? I know of a cave a few miles south of here. We'll tie him there temporarily and see that he has forage and water. Later, we may be able to find a home for him. Gosh, that'd be fine. What do you say, Hayes? That suits me. Then it's a deal. Meanwhile, O'Toole, the orderly who heard Colonel Wade sentence the mule to death, had spread word to the soldiers in his tent. With the news, the smoldering resentment of the troopers flamed into fury. We ought to drag the colonel out of his tent and hang him. Hey, now, wait, 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 listen. There's a better way of evening the score. How's that, Bill? Spread the word for all the men to stay in their tents and refuse to answer bugle calls and orders. Oh, hey. Why, that's mutiny. They'll shoot us. They wouldn't dare shoot every man in the regiment. <laughs> all right, now. Tomorrow morning, not a man will answer when Reveille and Assembly are sounded. The murderer of gunpowder will find himself a colonel without a regiment. Shortly after Reveille, the following morning, Colonel Wade sat in his headquarters tent with Major Bennett. The Major was looking past the open tent flap, 
while the colonel spoke. That mule incident will show the men that I'm no sentimental weakling. I tell you, Major, it doesn't pay to pamper soldiers. You may be right, sir. I know I'm right. Well, here comes Sergeant McQuaid with his morning report. Well, McQuaid, were all the men present and accounted for? I don't know, sir. You don't know? Oh, no, sir, there was no roll call this morning. Not a man was present. You mean they've deserted in the body? Oh, no, sir, they've heard about their mascot gunpowder. They're staying in their tent. <laughs> Major Bennett, muster all officers and non-coms. Then drive the mutineers into the open. But, sir... Find the Gatling guns on the tents. Give the scoundrels one minute to present themselves. And if they refuse, open fire. Sir, General Custer shot some unarmed soldiers he called deserters and mutineers. For it, he was court-martialed. Yeah. What, uh, what do you suggest, Major? We've stored all food supplies in the magazine where we've already locked the enlisted men's arms. Yes, With Gatling guns, the officers can hold the magazine against any attempt to storm it. If we're attacked, we'll then be justified in shooting. That's a good idea. In a day or two, those rebels will be starved into submission. Put your plan into operation at once. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Boy, did you ever have one of those rough days at school? Maybe you didn't get a real high mark on a test or score as many points as you wanted in a game. Well, that's the kind of a day a guy likes to get home and find his mother's baked a great big chocolate devil's food cake. Mmm, -hmm. a cake that says, I think you're swell no matter what. A perfect cake, the kind Mom gets every time she uses Betty Crocker chocolate devil's food cake mix. And is it easy? All the good chocolatey fixings are right in the package. All she has to do is add water and two fresh eggs for a cake that's so rich and homemade chocolatey good, you've got to have seconds, even thirds. Make sure there's lots of Betty Crocker chocolate devil's food cake mix in the cupboard at your house for a perfect cake every time you bake. Cake after cake after cake. It's guaranteed perfect by Betty Crocker of General Mills, Minneapolis. Now to continue. The Lone Ranger and Toto, after leaving the mule secure in a cave, had ridden at daybreak to the top of a cliff overlooking Spotted Bull's reservation. <laughs> They observed small bands of warriors riding by devious routes to the same ravine where the Lone Ranger and Toto had met McQuaid and Hayes. After watching for some time through his binoculars, the masked man said, Toto, they're sneaking off the reservation and massing in the ravine, and they've tied the tail to their ponies. And that means them on warpath. Maybe attack Camp Corbin. Whatever the Indians' plans are, the colonel must be warned in time to issue weapons to the soldiers. That is over easy. Indians got us cut off from army camp. We'll take the longer route, past the cave where we left the mule. Come on, In camp, Private Thorpe, representing the soldiers, stood in the headquarters tent, facing the irate commandant, who sat behind his desk. Colonel Wade was saying... Up. You've nothing to gain by this mutiny. Every one of you will be punished for police... Wade, these are the scouts I mentioned. Scouts? Major Bennett, you didn't tell me that one of them's a masked outlaw? I'm not an outlaw, sir. This letter from Colonel Miles may explain my mask. While the colonel read the letter of identification, Major Bennett briefly told the Lone Ranger and Tonto about the mutinous behavior of the soldiers. It's been brewing for a long time. The men have had to tolerate a lot of hardships, and they might have continued to do so. But the killing of their lucky mascot was the last straw. Isn't that the situation, Thor? Yes, sir. The treatment of gunpowder showed how little sympathy and understanding old soldiers can expect from men like Colonel Wade. That's enough, Thor. <clears throat> well, sir. Yes, Colonel Wade. Now that I know who you are, I, I apologize for calling you an outlaw. That's all right, sir. I came here to report that Spotted Bull and his followers have left the reservation, and they're wearing war paint. What? 
At a time like this? Yes, they must have learned about your situation and decided this is the time to make their move. How could they learn so quickly about the mutiny? They have scouts, sir. Where are the Indians? They're hiding in a ravine within easy striking distance. Their actions indicate they plan to attack tonight. They can't arm the men on mutiny. And if the Indians attack while we're defenseless, we'll all be massacred. How do I want to speak to you? Step outside the tent with me, will you? Uh, Grab it, George. Sit down. Yes. In front of the headquarters tent, the Lone Ranger outlined his plan, and Tonto listened carefully. When the masked man had finished, the Indian mounted his paint horse. Easy, scout, easy, fella. Get him up, scout. As Tonto rode away, the Lone Ranger rejoined the men in the headquarters tent. During the afternoon, despite Private Thorpe's talks with the mutineers and meetings with the officers, the deadlock remained unbroken. Sunset found the soldiers lounging near their tents. While a short distance away, Colonel Wade, Major Bennett, the Lone Ranger, and Sergeants McQuaid and Hayes stood near the headquarters tent. Sunset, yeah. Soon it'll be dark. Yeah. Then we can look for an attack at any moment. Yeah. That's right, Colonel. Are Captain Larkin and the other officers still guarding the magazine? Yes, sir. They're guarding it with Gatling guns. We'd better destroy the magazine so neither the Indians nor the mutineers can seize the guns and ammunition. Yes, sir. Now look over there. Hey, what, who, who is this? Looks like an Indian riding back and forth. I'll put my binoculars on him. Sometimes one Indian rides back and forth like that before an attack with a gesture of defiance. Well, he's dressed like a Sioux. I have my field glasses. Is that a horse he's leading, Major? No, sir, it's a mule. Huh? It looks like gunpowder. It is gunpowder. Well, okay, rules it. The mule's being led by Toto, disguised as a Sioux. And the mule's not dead. No, sir. McQuaid, Hayes. Yeah. You shoot the mule? Well, sir, we met the masked man. The and... fact is, Colonel Wade, the army mule's alive. What? And if the soldiers think it's been captured by Indians, they might be eager to ride to the rescue of their mascot. Yes, I understand. That Indian's closer now. Hey! That looks like our mule. Right? May I speak to the men, Colonel? Yes, yes, do so. Men, all of you, listen to me. Private Thorpe, tell the men gunpowder's alive. He's out there, led by that Indian who's making gestures of defiance. Well, have to shoot that mule. No time to explain now. We've got to rescue gunpowder. As soon as you start toward that Indian, he'll race to the ravine with the mule. You'll have to fight a lot of Indians there. Give us guns and horses. We'll fight them. Come in, please. Listen to me. That Indian dares you to try to take away from the Indians your good luck mascot. Give us guns and horses. We'll get him back. Now, if you do, I'll see that he's accorded the best treatment a mule can receive. That'll end the mutiny, Colonel. Just issue guns and horses, sir. Sergeant McQuaid and Hayes. Stand by the issue arm. Yes, sir. Minutes later, the regiment was under arms and in the saddle. As quietly as possible, the double line of troopers rode out of the camp. Toto, posing as a Sioux tribesman and leading the mule, waved defiantly at the oncoming troopers, led by the colonel and the lone ranger. Get him up, scout! Then, keeping out of bullet range, headed his dust-covered horse and the mule into a dry wash that led between hills to the hidden ravine. Tonto, cut off from the sight of the troopers, quickly turned into dense brush that lined the dry wash and drew rain. Oh, 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 the dense brush in the dry wash concealed the army mule, Tonto's horse, and Tonto, as the Lone Ranger let the column pass. The ravine's not far ahead, Colonel. In the ravine, the Indians were dismounted while awaiting darkness that would cover their attack on Camp Corbin. They heard the approaching horses, but by the time they realized the truth, it was too late to prepare for battle. The hard-riding troopers rounded a bend and swept into view, and the masked man leading shouted, There they are! Open fire! Many savages were shot before they could reach their ponies. Others were shot as they tried to flee from the superior fighting force. Then the fighting was hand-to-hand, 
and in the midst of the battle, the Lone Ranger and the Indian leader, Spotted Bull, came to grips. Are you hurt? This is for you! The chief dropped from a smashing blow to the jaw. After that, the fight ended quickly. After the battle, while the wounded men were being treated and the prisoners tied, the men in the ravine heard a familiar bray. They saw Toto riding toward them, leading the army mule. The Lone Ranger smiled as he saw the expressions on the faces of Sergeant McQuaid and Hayes. It was Hayes who spoke to the colonel. Colonel, sir, I, uh, well, that is McQuaid, now, sir. You and McQuaid were told to destroy the mule? Yes, sir, but uh, we, we... Oh, that's all right. A lot has happened since I took command. A lot that I'd like to forget. These fighting men have displayed a high degree of loyalty to an old mule. Oh, gunpowder's more than just a mule, sir. Yes, gunpowder is a symbol. And our flag is another symbol. I hope in time to teach these men to give to our flag and our nation the great loyalty of which they are capable. Uh, sir, I suppose there'll be some rough punishment for what happened. What, uh, what did happen? Well, well, we didn't shoot the mule, and, and the men went on mutiny. I don't remember those things. You... What? You mean that you... He that gunpowder is given the best of everything. That's all I have to say. Doggone it, Colonel, you're all right. I'll tell the men. Hey, boys, I've got news for all of you. Well, Colonel, not and I'll be on our way now. This regiment owes its existence to you, sir. I doubt that, sir, but thanks for saying it. Thank you. Thanks for everything. Your men are cheering you, Colonel. You won them by tempering discipline with well, human understanding. All right, let's go, Toto. Easy, sir. Easy, fella. Come on, come on. Come on. Tempering discipline with human understanding. I've learned a good lesson from the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.